Hi! In this lesson, we are going to learn about web page design and the role it plays in our development process. Let's start with an example. Imagine that you have been approached by a local coffee shop, The Daily Grind, to build their website. Just like an architect needs to draft a set of blueprints before construction of a house begins, you need to work with your clients to come up with a plan that addresses their various needs. You first need to consider what the coffee shop's specific needs are. What is their branding like? Do they want a certain visual appeal? Light and fresh or cozy and welcoming? What are they trying to get their customers to do? Visit the shop? Buy merchandise? What sort of visitor information will they want to track? Etc. There are a lot of things to consider in order to properly address your client's needs. Additionally, you also need to think about their customers' needs as well. What does a customer or visitor to the website expect or hope to see when they visit the page? How does this align with what your client wants them to see? Does the page clearly communicate the most important information? Is that information accessible to all types of people, including those with disabilities? What types of customers are they hoping to attract and what are their specific needs? And finally, you are the expert in web design. You know the best practices in creating visually appealing, clear, intuitive, and functional web pages. These principles must be considered when designing the layout and structure of the pages as well. The intersection of all three of these, your client's needs, their customer needs, and the best design and development principles, is where we come up with an effective web page design. Once this plan is in place, then the actual developing, the HTML and CSS, can begin. Since your client and their customer needs will be specific to the site you are designing, we are going to focus on learning about a few basic design and development principles for our designs. The first is the idea of a visual hierarchy. Visual hierarchy is the idea that design should be constructed so that users can distinguish the value and importance of elements in relation to one another. So what exactly does that mean? It means that designs can create and assign meaning and importance through their size, color, and proximity, among other design considerations. Consider these two headers. Even though both of them have important information, the one that users would immediately gravitate towards is the largest one. We've assigned meaning by changing the size, indicating that this one is more important than the one that we've decided to remain small. Similarly, the colors that we choose have an impact on how important information or elements will be. The darker color header is easier to visualize and thus is the one we gravitate towards. When we want information to have meaning, we generally should use darker colors, while lighter colors are best used for backgrounds. The distance that elements have from one another can also alter how we perceive them. The element that is given more space from the others is easier to read and decipher. If we want something to stand out and have meaning, separating it from other elements is an effective way to make sure users gravitate towards it. How we combine these different elements results in a web page that confers meaning and importance to users. It's the choices that we make on each individual element that change how users interact with and understand our product. While each individual element matters, there are different principles for how these different elements should be combined. Let's explore some of those now.